In creating the button, I'm just going to take the text tool and I'm going to change the, now that we're down in this white area, I'm going to change the color. I'm going to change the color of the font to black. And then I'll click and type forum in all capitals. And then get my select tool, position it. I'm going to make the font a little bit bigger. I'll take it up to 40 points. Okay, 40 points. Um, the other thing I can do is I can play with the character um, spacing, letter spacing if I want. So I can hold this and then change the letter spacing, which will help con constrict it. All right. So I'll do that. I like that letter spacing. Also, I can get the transform tool and I can stretch it a little bit. All right. Um, just it's it's nice to know how to play with these things. Letter spacing needs to be a bit less. Um, design considerations are what is readable, what looks good, what's readable. You notice that I'm using the same font, okay, for most of this. Um, normally, you don't want to have all different font sizes in something like this, but you do want to have certain things prioritized. So, um, you know. Uh, those are design considerations and right now I'm just trying to play with flash to get this to work so I've got this saying forum and then what I want to do is I want to have the like the shadow on the ground the opposite so what I'll do is I will hit edit copy I selected the text piece forum and once again edit that was edit copy and now I'll just do edit paste paste in place or paste in center I'll just paste in center okay there it is so now I've got a copy of it what I'll do is is drag it to the side here and change its color to light gray all right so now it's light gray can't see it there it is I'm just drag it notice if I had the text box selected and I changed the color it automatically just changed the color of the font and I'll just position it right underneath the other one so I've got it like that. I could leave it like that. Now if I want it to look like, like a possible shadow type of situation, um, I just need to flip this font. So to do that, I could say modify, align, no, not a modify, modify, arrange, no, modify, transform, there we go, flip vertical. And if I do that, it flips the font upside down and I can now adjust it and nudge it using the keys on my keyboard, the arrow keys, so that it's right underneath it. And so now it has this kind of opposite look or opposite effect. Next thing we need to do is turn this into a button. So to turn it into a button, what I'll do is I'll select this one. I'll hold down the shift key and select this one. So now I have both pieces of text selected and then I'm going to go modify convert to symbol. Now I get a convert to symbol dialog box and it, you have to choose what type of symbol you want it to be. A movie clip, a button, or a graphic. In most cases you're going to be making, mostly I make movie clips, they're the most useful, um, and I also make a lot of buttons. So I'm going to make this a button. I'm going to give it a name too. I'll call it button one, right? And I'll click OK. And so now this is a button symbol. So you've just made your first button symbol. Um, if you were to go in your library, you'll see it in there. I'll see it open the library here, and you'll see there I've got a symbol button one in my library. What's neat about symbols is that they're reusable. So you could grab this symbol and you could drag it out and reuse it. Also, if you were to delete it, it's still in your library. So it's a reusable piece of graphic that. Um, it's really handy and it's one of the things that helps make flash files so small is reusability of uh, symbols. So anyway, so there it is in my library. So what I need to do now is if I want to code to this to write a little script to make this button work, what I'm going to need to do is give it a name. 
um, not just a name, but an instance name. And to do that, you select the button, so you highlight it, you go to your property window, and you see up at the top, it says instance name. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it B1, so that it's different than the button's name. This is the instance name. So you have a button called button1, but you can have multiple instances. So this one is instance name is B1, but if I was to go in the library and drag out another button, all right, so now I have two buttons, right? Drag this button out, let's say. If I highlight this button, it has no instance name. So what I could do is I could name this one B2 and hit enter so that it takes. So now this one is B1 and this one is B2 and they could both, you could click on these. We could write a little script that makes when you click on this one, you go somewhere. If you click on this one, you go somewhere else or you do something else. So that's the that's the reason why with your buttons and your movie clips you want to give them different instance names. Um, okay, so I'll delete that. I'm going to use this opportunity to teach you a little bit more about buttons before we write our script that makes this movie work and the button work. So to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this button and notice it's got the B1 name. And what I can do is I want to edit this button. I want to work on it. Um, once you've converted a graphic on the stage to a button, it gets unique properties. So, for instance, what I can do is I can double click on this button and I will go into button editing mode. So I'll double click on the button and you'll see that things change up here on the timeline. Now I don't have a normal timeline. I have a special button timeline, essentially, or, you know, button states. Instead of a regular timeline with keyframes like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I have these button states, up, over, down, and hit. And by default, when you have a button, you start off with just the up state. So the up state is this. What I want to do is I want to roll over the button and have it highlight. So what I'm going to do is put a keyframe here. So what I'm going to do is right click on here, insert keyframe, okay, deselect by with your select tool selecting the background area and then click the black forum and change the color to orange all right so now if i i can scrub this by grabbing this red piece here when when the mouse is up it'll look like black when i roll over the um when i roll over the button it'll turn orange and then i'll put a down state too when i click down on the mouse on the button, we'll do something else. So I'll right click here, insert a keyframe, and then I'll deselect, and then select this orange piece and change it to white. Okay, so we've got we've got up, over, down, and then the hit state. We'll talk about this hit state. The hit state is the area that activates the button which can be much bigger than the text. In fact, you oftentimes want to set this so that if you're in the U and your cursor's between the U inside of the U or inside of the O that the button doesn't deactivate. I'll show you what I mean by that. If I hit control enter right now, I will publish a movie and you'll see when I roll over the button turns orange. If I click down on the button it turns white. But look what happens when my cursor goes in the center. You'll see that or well it's actually not working it's it's activated pretty good here but in the old versions of flash the text wouldn't do that if I put my cursor in the center of the O it would deactivate and it's still kind of acting a little funny so what I'll do is on the hit state I'll put a keyframe insert keyframe and then I'll get my rectangle tool and I'll draw an area that I want the button to activate in. And notice I'm going to make it slightly bigger than the area. So there it is. Notice it was white color was not a good choice. Get my select tool, highlight that, change it to red to show the hit state area. So now if I hit control enter and publish my movie, if I get anywhere close to the button it activates, right? Activates all over here, Notice the button activates as soon as I get even close to this. It's working. And if you want that, that activation area for your button to be bigger, just get my transform tool and I could stretch it out. I can stretch it out wider here all the way to the edge. And now if my mouse is anywhere near this area, it'll activate the button. Hit Control Enter to publish your movie 
and you'll see now as soon as I get even close to this it activates the button.